Hey, yo, everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video. And today we're going to be doing another edition of what I am thinking. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel and know nothing about this video series, it is exactly how it sounds. I sit down and I talk about what I am thinking. Now, it could be about anything. It could be about politics. It could be about cars. It could be about jet airplanes. It could be about Luke Skywalker. Anything. Chances are I'll be geeky related like comic books, video games, so on and so forth. And what am I thinking today? Well, today's topic is going to be about my preparations for The Dark Knight Rises and my opinions going into the film. Now, um, this I actually wanted to talk about on my Andrew Carter Pick of the Week video that I just had previously up. And if you notice in that video, I keep on saying, there's something I want to talk about, there's something I wanted to say, and it was about The Dark Knight Rises. But I figured I have enough to say that I can just commit it to one video rather than just shoehorning it into my Andrew Carter Pick of the Week video. So, first and foremost is I want to say for The Dark Knight Rises, I already have my tickets pre-ordered. I have them right over there. They're actually... If you see my glorious wall of Batman figures, it is, uh, the tickets are right next to the George Perez Robin figure. Anyways, uh, I got two tickets, one for myself and one for my fiance. And, um, one, two, three, four, five of my friends are going to be going to the movie theater with me. Um, four of my D&D friends and then, um, one friend from the comic store that I work at. So we have the midnight release set up. So I am going to be seeing the midnight release. And uh, basically, first I'll give you what our schedule is going to be. And then I'll give you my opinions going into Dark Knight Rises. Whether I'm excited, whether I'm not excited, what I think the film is going to be about, so on and so forth. Uh, first and foremost, what we're going to do is, it's nothing big. Uh, we're just going to meet up beforehand and we're going to have dinner. Then we'll hang out beforehand and then we'll go to the movie theater and see the movie at 12 o'clock. So I will be seeing the midnight release. Um, and I will do a video review of it, um, uh, either on my channel or on my fiance's channel, either or, I, I, we haven't decided. Uh, and there's a reason for that, because, um, in preparation for The Dark Knight Rises, what I've been doing is, me and my fiance have been sitting down and watching all the Batman films from 1989 onward. We've done 1989, um, Returns, Forever, and Batman Robin, and she fell asleep during Batman and Robin, uh. Who can blame her? Uh, so all we have left is Begin and Dark Knight Rises, which she already saw, but I'm doing it as a refresher course. Uh, and we've been doing that, uh, the reason why I've been doing that is one, two, so I can kind of get, um, how, how's best to say this? You don't really appreciate every, anything until you look at everything, if that makes sense. Um, you know, I, 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 can, I can be very hard on Batman films, which is surprising because you think, well, Andrew, you're you're one of the biggest Batman fanboys out there. You would probably praise it no matter what. No, that's not necessarily the case. I tend to be harder on Batman films than I tend to be on other films uh, because it is Batman and because I hold it to such a high standard um, and it's my favorite character. Um, and I think uh, there's a lot of roadblocks that I automatically set up for Batman films that I don't do for other comic book films. Mainly, Batman's one of the superheroes that I don't think there will ever be an actor for me that will ever fit my Bruce Wayne, my Batman. Uh, no actor, I think, will portray Bruce Wayne or Batman as perfectly as he's done in the comics. Um, I hold that to be true for a lot of superheroes. Uh, Wonder Woman being one of them. Uh... Who else? Uh, Hal Jordan, I think, is a tough thing to hit. But, uh, you know, Bruce Wayne is, and in, in Batman uh, is um, one of the characters that I don't think any actor is going to perfectly get down. And I think that's one of the roadblocks that I set up for Batman movies. Because while I go through the Batman movies that we've been watching, I say, well, they definitely didn't do right. They did, no, they did that wrong. No, uh, it, it's, it's impossible. I just hit, I set it to too high of a standard. Same for Wonder Woman. I think there's some actresses that could... Uh, portray Wonder Woman okay, but I don't think there's any that will fit my my perception, my idea of Wonder Woman. In saying that, uh, like I said, you don't really appreciate everything before until you watch everything. And it's been a while since I watched all the previous Batman movies, and I start to 
see the, the great strengths with some of the movies, like the strengths that come with the 89, with Return, with Forever. Um, and even Batman and Robin has some strengths. Not many, but some. Uh, but then you look at the glaring weaknesses that come from them. You know, there's some big time weaknesses from each movie. And uh, it makes me appreciate some of the later movies like Begins and Dark Knight, uh, Dark Knight a lot more because you get to see those strengths uh, that were lacking in the previous films. You see some of the weaknesses, but not too much either. Uh, so it's really kind of an interesting balance that you know I'm going through right now because I used to hold certain Batman movies to a high degree, but after rewatching them and, and, and you know for like the ninth million time because I can't tell you how many times I've watched. Batman 89 and Forever, when I was a kid, those were like my drugs of choice uh, when watching films. That and Goldeneye and Return of the Jedi. But uh, when you when you look at it, it's, it's just interesting looking at things through different eyes. So I get to see some of the strengths and some of the weaknesses that come from either or. or. Um, when it comes down to those, I am going to discuss those with... Uh, Mrs. Cutter, Gotham Guru, my fiance, she's going to sit down with me and we're going to talk about that at some point. But that, that's that been some of the preparation going into the Dark Knight films is that we've been watching this stuff. And I think I made it no secret that my favorite Batman film is actually Batman Begins. I'm not going to go into details or reasons why, but it just is. It's so far at this point, Batman Begins is my favorite Batman film. And when Batman Dark Knight Rises was announced and we saw the first trailer, I said to you guys that I wasn't really excited for it. Why? Because it was so far away and I really couldn't get excited for it. I didn't see enough material for me to get all fanboy and it, it was just too far away. Why get excited for something so far away? It's just gonna, it's, it'll torture me. Um, however, more and more trailers are coming out. And uh, we get to see a lot more of Bane, a lot more Batman, a lot more Catwoman. And I'm progressively getting more fanboy. I'm starting to, uh, you know, because there's a lot of things in this movie that I'm really starting to see that I like. Uh, we might as well talk about the first thing, is Bane. Um, I made no secret that Bane is my favorite Batman villain. Quite possibly my favorite comic book villain. Uh, you know, he's right up there with Deathstroke. If you consider Deathstroke a villain anymore, or if you just consider him you know, chaotic neutral or an anti-hero, but uh, I love Bane, and I'll give you a clear-cut, simple reason why. Bane is the only man to truly beat Batman. Certain villains may have got the upper hand with Batman sometimes. Some villains may outright beat him. I remember a fight between Deathstroke and Batman, and Deathstroke kicked Batman's ass. Okay. But the only person to truly defeat the Batman is Bane. He defeated him psychologically, intellectually, spiritually, he broke his will, and he broke his body. Uh, Bane, it, it wasn't just Bane showed up and fought him. It was a methodical plan that Bane made out to defeat the Batman. He tested Batman, he put Batman through a gauntlet of villains, he weakened Batman, he watched Batman, he studied Batman's strengths and his weaknesses, he deduced what Batman's um, secret identity was, and then... When Batman was at the end of the road where he was barely able to stand, Bane broke him. Not just when it came down to breaking his back, which he did quite successfully, but Bane also broke the spirit of Batman. Bruce did not want to be Batman afterwards. It took a lot for Bruce to want to come back to be Batman. Mostly a crazy Batman named Azrael. But, you know, the Bane did what no other villain could. I mean, as much as, say, Darkseid may beat up Batman in a fistfight, oh, that would be horrendous. He never really truly beats Batman. He may defeat Batman physically, but spiritually, mentally, willpower-wise, Batman's still there. He'll come back. He'll beat you. Bane, Bane stalked Batman. So, you know, not just that, but I think the aura that comes with Bane, the, the physical look of him uh, with the mask and, you know, the venom and the, you know, the hulking body, uh, he's very monstrous. It's kind of funny because um, my fiance, she doesn't really get too shaken up by any of the, the villains or s scary things that happen in comics. Like, Joker doesn't bother her. Bane bothers her. And I find that interesting because, like, whenever she sees Bane or, uh, like, the new movie, the trailers have been spooking her a little. When we watched Justice League Doom, she was just weirded out by Bane, especially when he, like, I think he took an alligator and snapped the alligator in two. Uh, she doesn't like Bane. <laughs> uh, she's uh, she's kind of uh, tweaked out, for lack of a better term. 
But uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm so pumped for Bane. I think Tom Hardy, so far what I've seen, looks like he's doing good portrayal of Bane. The voice just looks good. You know, it has that uh, the unique accent that Bane has, uh, but it has that aura of cockiness, but a cockiness that Bane deserves to have. You know what I'm talking about. And um, the voice he does is pretty much what I hear Bane does in the comics. I was shocked on how... You know, there's very few comic book uh, voice actors that get the voice down right. Uh, the obvious ones are Kevin Conroy or um, Mark Hamill. Those are the two most obvious. Uh, but also, I think uh, Tom Hardy get, gets Bane down very well. So, uh, I'm pumped for that. Uh, I wasn't too... Sorry about the hair. I just came out of the shower. I need a haircut desperately. Um, I think uh, at first I was a little iffy. On, oh, what's their name? It's going to bother me. Because I should know this. Uh, oh, Anne Hathaway. I was a little iffy on Anne Hathaway being Catwoman, but the more I see of her talk, uh, the more I see of her do what she does, you know, not just the fighting, but how she interacts with Batman, the, the little quips that she says. Uh, maybe physically she may not be perfect as Catwoman. A, a lot more accurate than, say, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer was. But um, I think she's getting the character down fairly well. Again, this is all from trailers that we've seen. My opinion could completely change when I see the movie because we're getting like two seconds of a trailer. Uh, or two, like 2% two of the movie. But... Um, I'm actually really pumped for her as Catwoman. I think uh, Christopher Knoll in his little realistic universe incorporated Catwoman very nicely. But I'm really getting pumped for this film. I'm actually really... I haven't been this pumped for a comic book film since... Oh, God. Maybe Dark Knight. Or uh, maybe Watchmen. I think Watchmen I was as equally pumped for than Dark Knight. Um... And, you know, the funny thing is, is Dark Knight was a film that I don't think I liked until a couple months after the film. Uh, I liked the film. I thought it was good. But I don't think I truly loved it until I watched it again on DVD a couple times. And then I, I started to appreciate the small little things that were done in it. Um, after, my first impression of Dark Knight was, I'm like, oh, this is a good film. They did nice. I like this. But after I started watching DVD more, I was like, oh, this... Okay, I can appreciate that. That was good. That was good. That was good. But I think it's Dark Knight Rises that I'm actually starting to get more pumped for. Maybe because it is Bane. Uh, maybe it's because uh, this is the end. Maybe it's because of Catwoman. I don't know. I think it's more Bane than anything. I, I, if they did a movie of just Bane going around breaking people's backs, I'd be cool with that. I'm not kidding. Like, two hours and 30 minutes of Bane just going around going, I will break you and you. In you, oh, and I'm gonna break you, John Cena. So, um, I think there's a lot that I am pumped for. Now, a lot of people are doing theories, predictions on what is exactly gonna happen to Batman in this film. Uh, we know a few things. We know, uh, spoilers, I guess, even though the film isn't out. We know from one of the trailers that Batman gets his legs broken, I believe. I could be wrong, but I think he's looking at x-rays with the doctor, and he says the legs are broken in, like, two places. So I'm pretty sure Bane breaks his legs. Uh, there's a big gap between Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. I think it's, like, seven or eight years. Nolan said that it will be explained in the film. And, again, like I said, there's a lot of predictions on what will happen to Batman in this film. Uh, one of my friends, uh, stoically... No, stoic is not the word. Uh, one of my friends believes that Batman's gonna die. He believes that Batman's going to die and, uh, what's his name? Oh, I forget his name. The guy that played the kid from Third Rock from the Sun, who's actually a really good actor, uh, but, uh, for some reason his name escapes me. I'm going to pull up the internet because it's not, uh, I forget. Uh, it sucks because he's actually a really good actor and, um... Uh, I hate myself for not knowing this. But um, he thinks that he's going to replace Batman. So he thinks that um, Bane is going to kill Batman or Batman's going to eventually die at the end of the film and someone else will take Batman's place. Uh, I, I don't think that. Uh, Batman will not die. Let's just let's get that straight. Uh, could I say it's conceivable Batman could die? 
it is conceivable, but will he die? No, Batman will not die. Um, I, I think his prediction is false, but that's just him. Uh, jo Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Silly me. Silly me. Um, I can't believe I forgot his name, because it's, it stands out, too. Um, I like that Rachel Ghoul is coming back. Ray Ghul is going to be in it with Liam Nielsen. And Liam Nielsen is uh, one of my favorite actors in recent years. I think he's a, a very good actor. I think he portrays most of his roles very nicely. Um, I think his uh, my favorite role with Liam Nielsen was... Oh, God. I'm kind of going on uh, Liam Nielsen's fix, but I think it was... It was... Uh... I don't know. It's tough. Schindler's List, probably. He was in Schindler's List, right? He was uh, he was Schindler in Schindler's List. Um, and if that's the case, I think that's the best film that he's done. I, I believe, and it's killing me because I like that film. That film was really, really good. Um, and I'm going to check that on online. As you can see, uh, Liam Nielsen. I'm 99999999999999. Point nine 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 percent sure. He, yeah, uh, he he was in Schindler's List, and I think he uh, did a very good job in that film. And that was my favorite film of him. And the only film I didn't like that he was in was um, Star Wars. But can you? The prequels sucked. Uh, but yeah, there's a prediction that Bruce will get killed, and George Gordon Levitt will take up. No, I don't think it's what's going to happen. Is Bane's going to break him? Batman's going to have his trials of char a character, and he'll come back, and he'll punch, kick, boom, win the day, and take over, and defeat Bane with the help of Catwoman. Uh, I think this may be a, an interesting prediction. Is this, uh, I think there's like a 5% chance that Batman will stop being Batman. Not die, stop being Batman, and settle down with Catwoman, maybe? But I don't think that will happen. I think it will be very status quo. But then again, you never know, because I think um, Christopher Nolan is ending the series, so anything can happen at the end of it. Anything. Uh, maybe he wants to be ridiculously ballsy and do something over the top, something that we wouldn't expect. Maybe. Will it happen? We don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pumped for this film. Uh, and I'm, I think I'm more pumped for it than I actually thought I was going to be pumped for. And I will admit, 90% of that is the fact that Ra's al Ghul, Liam Nielsen, Tom Hardy as Bane, um, you know, Selena Kyle, Catwoman, uh, is going to be in it. So, I, I really do like the cast of rogues, for lack of a better term. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm just pumped. So, my question to you guys. What do you guys think? Are you pumped? Are you excited? Uh, what are your opinions? Uh, please let me know. I'm, I'm interested. Uh, just comment down below or do a video response. Video responses are good. Uh, but yeah, you know, afterwards I'll give you guys my thoughts on Batman Dark Knight Rises. I, I'm pretty pumped. It's going to be in less than a week. It's, thir it's Sunday today, the 15th. It comes out on the 19th on Thursday, so I'm pumped. Excuse me. So I'm gonna end this video here. This is in, and sorry for all the forgetfulness. Still, uh, still kind of early in the morning. I have to get prepped for work. So, um, but this is Andrew saying peace out now.